And you've heard the, the convener raising issues about the whole decision-making process and record-keeping issues, and you've heard my colleague Craig Coy highlighting the, the issue about risk and proper consideration of risks, which are central to, to some of the issues that we're, we're facing now. In your, in your view, are the issues that have been raised about those two areas, were they sufficient, do you think, to have um, invited the government to reach a different decision about the procurement of these vessels? So I think the, the singular piece of evidence to, to rely on there, at least to consider, is the, the, the written uh, advice from CMAL executive to uh, Mr Nichols and then subsequently Mr Nichols up to the minister, where it talks about the management of that risk on, in terms of the refund guarantee changing and the mitigations put in place and what the residual risk was. And again, I don't have the bit of paperwork in front of me, but it talks it talks about, I think, from recollection, there was a, a medium level of risk remaining, if you like, with the, the delivery of the vessels, that it then goes on to uh, explain a number of scenarios that may or may not happen, i.e. if there is insolvency, then the title of all the different parts, etc., has now been secured on behalf of the buyer. So it, it lays out what the level of risk that was, in Seamill's mind, remaining at that point, having negotiated a different set of, of, uh, of outcomes with the, with the builder. Mm -hmm. And had, had the government not proceeded with the procurement of vessels, what would the impact have been? What would be the outcome? So at that time, uh, if, if the procurement had not gone forward, then it would have been a, a retendering exercise and start, start from scratch. And, and obviously, at that time, a delay to the introduction of those vessels into into service, uh, and the impact on on communities on that. Okay, thanks again. Back to you again.